In this demo, we're going to cover the topic of the Red Hat Package Manager. But before we do that, I want to briefly cover the topic of uh, file ownership. So let's take a look at the current directory. Um, we have a file, an RPM file called sysstat. And this um, sysstat is basically a, a, um, an executable that allows you to gather information about the, the system as far as memory, I.O., and CPU utilization. And this is the RPM to install the file. As we can see, this file is owned by root, by the user root, and it belongs to the group root as well. So let's say I wanted to change this file so that instead it's owned by the user student, which is a user that I have installed currently um, available in this system. And then I want the group uh, that this file belongs to to be um, the user's group which is a group that exists on the system. So to do that, I would use the command chown to change ownership. And then I would put student for the group, for the user that I want this file belonging to, and then colon, and then the group that I want the file to belong to, which in this case is root, which in this case I said I want it to be users. And then the name of the file says that. Um, if this was a directory and I wanted to do it for all the files, that exist in this directory and to go recursively to other directories I would do um, chown minus r and then the um, user colon the group and then the directory and this would change it for everything inside the directory as well okay now that we've covered that um, let's talk about the Red Hat Package Manager the Red Hat Package Manager basically is a tool uh, designed to help sysadmins with the uh, task of software management. And by that I mean installing uh, software, uh, removing software, querying and seeing what software you have installed and, and updating existing software in your system. So let's take a look at this tool. Um, this tool is available as a, a, a command line um, executable and also as a uh, graphical uh, tool which you can run if you're running um, a graphical interface. A next Windows interface and you could run it by running the command system dash config dash packages but if you're in the terminal like um, like I am right now then you need to use the command RPM so let's say you wanted to install uh, this sysstat um, RPM which we have in this directory to install it you would run the command RPM minus I for install V for verbose to find out what's going on and H to get the hashes as it's installing basically tells you how how, how much progress uh, it's it's happened since the install started and and then the name of the file sysstat um, if I already had sysstat and this was an, an, an update to it instead of the I I would put a capital U for update but in my case I don't have it yet so it would be RPM minus IBH and sysstat. So we'll go ahead and install it. Uh, see the hashes here? This is what the H gives me. It's just the progress bar as to where it is. And we'll wait. looks like it's taking a little bit of time um, system has to go in and uh, RPM I mean has to go in and it keeps all of this information as to what current packages you have and um, the dependencies that packages need and all of that information in a database so looks like at this point it's trying to um, write uh, all that information so uh, normally it doesn't take this long but uh, the load I think is pretty high right now so it's taking a little longer than usual okay so now it's done so um, I've installed that file so let's say I wanted to um, to query the Red Hat package manager and find out if I already have this file installed then the command I would run would be RPM minus Q for query A and then this would list me all the packages that I currently have. So if I want to do, I want to pipe it to grep minus I and then sysstat. And what this is going to do is this is going to list me all the packages that I have currently installed 
and then grep minus i and then sysstat actually sysstat will go in and only show me um, the ones that have sysstat in them regardless of the case whether it's upper or lower case so let's see what it returns there you go so it tells me that I currently have sysstat5 serial 5 dash 11 RHL4 and that's basically what this is the one that I just installed as you can see RPMs um, usually have the name of the software file that you're installing then the version which in this case is this then the release it's for Red Hat Enterprise 4 and then the architecture Intel 386 um, that's usually the format for the name of the file now um, so this went ahead and installed sysstat, right? So um, if I wanted to see what files this package installed, I could run rpm minus ql and then sysstat. And this will tell me all the files that this package installed when we installed it. So as we can see, it installed um, a bunch of packages. But in, in this case, the ones that are, these are the executables here that get put into the bin directory and the libraries for the package get put into the lib directory and then the rest are probably just documentation but um, these two executables are useful the iostat gives you information on the um, on how much IO your system is using and that's one of the nice utilities that sysstat provides you so um, so now let's say um, Now we know that uh, this sysstat installed this iostat, right? So let's say that we didn't know this information. We didn't know, and we wanted to know what package actually installed this particular executable. So the command to run to find out uh, what package installed iostat would be rpm minus qf and then the executable. And see, this tells it tells us that it was sysstat, the one that installed it. Um, now, let's say we wanted to remove sysstat. Um, if we wanted to do that, the command we would run would be rpm minus e, and then sysstat. And you put everything but the rpm, but the architecture and rpm. And that removes it. So now, if, our, if we run our command um, rpm minus qa5 grab minus i sysstat, it's going to tell us that there is no file sysstat. So we went ahead and uninstalled it. Um, a couple more things about rpm which come useful sometimes is, as I mentioned, some rpms have some dependencies. And what that means is they, they require other rpms to exist prior to, um, to, to, to install. So um, let's say that for some reason the system is not finding that dependency or that other RPM, but you know you've already installed it, maybe it was a different type of install, it wasn't an RPM, it was just a compile that you did and you, you still had the libraries and you still had the executables. So what you would do in that case would be, um, when you install it, you would do RPM minus IBH and then minus minus no depths and this basically wouldn't check for any dependencies and then the name of the file so this would install this this particular um, executable and it wouldn't check the dependencies for the for the particular RPM and let's say um, for some reason your RPM wasn't installing and it was getting hung up another parameter you can pass is minus IVH and then forced to actually force it to install um, let's say maybe your rpm installed halfway but it didn't complete but it actually updated the database of rpm and uh, the next time you try to install it um, it told you that it was already installed but you know it was corrupted and you wanted to force it and reinstall it then you could pass the minus minus force and that would reinstall it even though it's already installed in your system um, Red Hat Enterprise systems come with a utility called UpToDate, UpToDate, which um, 
which basically allows you to um, update all your RPMs on your system. Um, the first time you run it, it basically configures your system to connect to the Red Hat network uh, and to this URL in particular. To, to, to basically, what it does is it sends your information over to Red Hat and it says, this is the system that I currently have. And then they compare it to what the latest is and then they tell you what RPMs are available for you to update your system. Uh, it's a pretty neat tool, but it, as part of the installation or the first time you run it, it will ask you for, um, for a user ID and password. And in order to get that, you need to pay Red Hat uh, a fee for a Red Hat subscription. So I've, I've installed it in our main system and I, since I have a subscription, but I, I haven't gotten subscriptions for uh, uh, everybody else. So um, we won't be using it, but I just want you to be aware that this tool is out there. And um, if you pay for your subscription, um, this is one way how you would uh, update your uh, your system and get the latest RPMs and patches as they are available, made available by Red Hat. Um, another thing that we need to know is that besides the Red Hat Package Manager, sometimes um, you need to install software and this software is not available as an RPM for your architecture or for your particular uh, Linux install. So in those cases, you might find that uh, the developer or the, the company has the software available, but it's in the form of a tar file. So um, let's take a look at uh, an example of that. Here, I've downloaded the tar file for uh, Macromedia Flash or Adobe Flash now as it is. And this is the Flash Player version 9. And I couldn't find an RPM for it, but Adobe has it available as a tar.gz. A tar file is nothing more than a package which contains directories and other files inside. And in this case, um, the software is available as a package which is also compressed, gc, gun zipped. So if I wanted to install this, um, the first step would be to uncompress the files and to extract the files um, um, that are uh, inside the tar file. So to do that, I run the command tar minus z. Z is um, the bit that tells tar to unzip it prior to extracting it. X is to extract. And then uh, V because I want verbose output of all the files that get extracted. And F because I'm doing this from a file and not from a tape. So tar minus X, Z, X, V, F, and then install. And this will, um, as you can see, it extracted and it gave me a verbose of all the files. So what it did is it created a directory um, install flash 9 Linux. So we'll go ahead and CD to that directory. And usually um, software that's packaged as a tar or a tar GZ has inside um, a readme file or an install file. And basically this file tells you the steps you need to perform in order to install the software. So in our case, we'll read the readme and see what it says. Okay, so here are the instructions. Installing the plugin targc using the install script. So it looks like we need to unpack the tar file, which we already did. Then it says in terminal navigate to the unpacks directory and enter. So we're already there. So now all we need to do is run this command to run the this file uh, here, Flash Player Installer, which has got read and execute for root, so we can actually run it. Uh, to run a file that has got the execute permission for the user you are, you can type the command um, dot for the current directory slash and then the name of the file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to run the install. And here it says to install Adobe Flash Player, press, press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. It says to close any browsers that we have running. I don't have any browsers running. Um, please enter the installation path of the Mozilla uh, browser. I'm going to keep the defaults. Keep the defaults for that. Same thing. Oh, it's wanting me to actually type it. So user lib Mozilla. 
and I can't find it. Um, let's see, locate Mozilla. Locate Mozilla. Let's see. User left Firefox. Let's try that for the directory. So we'll go back and SSH D plus one. We'll go back to the flash install. Okay, we'll run again our executable. Press enter, press enter again. Let's try putting that directory. And this time it took it. It says we'll be installing the following directory. Proceed with installation, yes. Perform another installation, no, and we're done. So that basically shows you how you would install um, a particular uh, software that is not an RPM, but instead, instead a uh, TAR file.